Princess Elizabeth of Dementia was, as all proper princesses should be, pretty hard to please. She was also very good at maths. Her father, King Rupert, had promised her hand in marriage to anyone who could come up with a proven treatment for his elder subjects who were suffering from mild memory problems. The truth is, he was pretty confident that no one would be able to do it to her satisfaction, and that his daughter would remain unmarried and able to look after him for many years to come. Prince Robert of Concordia was very keen to try his luck with King Rupert's challenge and consulted with his nutritional advisor about how to go about it. Well, since you asked Prince Robert, I've heard on the grapevine that anything containing polyphenols is great for your memory. As it so happens, I've got a job lot of grape juice in the back of the van, which is full of them, and I really need to shift it. The thing is, the expiry date is in 12 weeks' time. If you get a move on and do a trial on some elders as soon as possible, I get rid of it, you get the girl, and King Rupert will place a massive order of grape juice for all his older subjects. Everyone wins. You've just got to get a bit of evidence that it works. But that's quite a tight timeline to do a trial. And what if it doesn't show any benefit? <laughs> well, you know what they say about statistics. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Just get recruiting, make sure you randomise, double blind, all that rubbish they love at Castle Cochrane. Job done. And if it doesn't show any benefit, I've got a cousin at the Blueberry Marketing Board who might be able to help you out. Anyway, hurry up, this trial isn't going to run itself. So Prince Robert proclaimed throughout the land of Concordia by email and Twitter that he was running a randomised controlled trial on grape juice to improve memory, and he needed elders with mild memory problems to sign up by 3 o'clock that very afternoon. Unfortunately, only 12 subjects got the message on time and fulfilled the eligibility criteria. But Prince Robert was so desperate to win the princess, he ran the trial anyway. After a few short weeks, the trial was finished, the statistical analysis was done, and the report had been written up on a beautiful scroll for presentation to the princess. Prince Robert was feeling quite pleased with himself as he hopped through the gates of Castle Cochrane with the scroll under his arm. With a great flourish, he presented the scroll to the princess. She opened it and read the title. Concord grape juice supplementation improves memory function in older adults with mild cognitive impairment. Promising title. Let me have a closer look at the numbers. Oh, will that really be necessary, Princess? You can see from figure one that on average the elders drinking grape juice remembered 5.4 more items than the control group of elders drinking fake grape juice. And the p-value of 0.04 says it all. It's a significant result, no doubt about it. Let's get hitched, please. Hmm. I find table one a bit more revealing. Called me old fashioned, but the placebo group scored a bit lower on all the cognitive tests before the trial even started. So isn't the graph a bit less misleading? Shouldn't it show the relative difference between the two groups, which was 3.4, not 5.4? Well, I suppose you've got a point. But whatever you think about the graph, the statistical analysis shows there's a significant moderate positive effect of grape juice on memory. For list acquisition, but not delayed verbal recall or spatial memory. I gotta say, one out of three ain't bad. So you'd say grape juice was definitely worth drinking if you need to remember lists? Definitely. You've got to admit that a p-value of 0 0.04 is impressively teeny tiny. There's only a 4% chance that, that the improvement in list learning was nothing to do with grape juice. Oh yes. The very small p is obviously great on remembering listing. But I really think we should have a closer look at the other aspects of the trial design. Must we? Yes, I think we really must. Danny would be awfully cross if I didn't look at the evidence properly and married the wrong person. Gosh, it says here that, the, you, that your study only had 12 people in it and only 5 actually drank the grape juice. Couldn't you have rustled up a few more elders? Personally, I wouldn't get out of bed for less than 60 participants. 
Oh, yeah. We didn't have a whole lot of funding, and we were a bit pushed for time. It's a preliminary study anyway. It was randomised and blinded. So that's good, isn't it? Randomising 12 whole people! You must be exhausted! You've done an awful lot of statistics for just 12 people. Isn't it a bit over the top, is it? Well, yeah, but we've just got this great new software at the palace. You just plug the numbers in. Well, actually, you get the servants to plug the numbers in. And then, bingo! Out come teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny little p-values of 0.05 or under. So sweet. It's like magic, really. But anyway, you don't need to worry your pretty little head about how we analyse the results. A p-value of 0.04 tells you the result is statistically significant. Oh, that's all you need to know. Isn't statistics wonderful? All oh, the newspapers are going to love it. <laughs> ka -ching. Can I make a suggestion on a better way to de detect whether grape juice actually has a significant positive effect on memory or not and increase the probability of me marrying you slightly from the current p-value of... Zero point zero 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 one. Oh, sure thing, sweetie. Go right ahead. Do a bigger trial. It's not rocket science. Well, yeah, as I say, we didn't have time or much money, and um, well, we didn't have. Well, we. Oh, Tell you what, why don't I have a little look at the raw data? I love data. I'm not sure these SAT software packages give a very clear picture half the time. Um, uh, well, there might be a little bit of a problem with using the data. Why is that then? The palace server crashed. And, uh, we, um, lost it all. Good thing I wrote it up on this lovely scroll, isn't it? Really? So you're telling me, on top of everything, if my friend here at Castle Cochrane wanted to write a systematic review on meta-analysis of trials on grape juice for memory, they wouldn't be able to include the raw data from your study, because they're now unobtainable? Um, yeah, I guess so. It's hardly a great basis for marriage into the Cochrane royal family, is it? Now, I'm rather busy. I have to finish a very important paper on reporting standards in trial of diagnostic test accuracy. I'll get my coat. <laughs>